The fiery glow of hot steel no longer lights the Cary Furnace site. This is where rivers of uh, molten yep, metal poured. That's unbelievable. But Mayor John Fetterman of Braddock, Pennsylvania, has an idea for how to resurrect it, and other sites like it, manufacturing renewable energy. 175 tons of steel in every windmill with 8,000 moving parts. And all of these things need people to produce, to make them. And to do it overseas, say in China or India, where there's little to no environmental controls, defeats the purpose of moving to clean energy in the first place. The August 1892 issue of Scientific American featured the Cary Furnace and the rest of the Homestead Steelworks on its cover. Just outside Pittsburgh, it was once the latest and greatest technology to produce steel. But now weeds grow where temperatures once reached more than 1,000 degrees Celsius. The blast furnace last ran in 1982. My town personally went from a, a community of 20,000 residents back in the you know, post-World War II boom to under 3,000 today. Can green energy relight the fire of local economies like Braddock? It's a vision shared by political leaders from Pennsylvania to Washington, D.C., and made real, at least dimly, by the Obama stimulus package. We've really come a long way. We used to have 25% of the uh, turbine content, uh, the 8,000 components of a turbine, uh, uh, be made here domestically, 75% uh, imported from abroad. Um, that's, that's flipping now. We've got a majority now that's domestically manufactured, and, and we're on the right trajectory. The only question is whether it's too little, too late. The U.S. has a shot of being a global leader, if not the global leader, in wind manufacturing because of our trained workforce and our quality standards uh, and our auto supply chain and other uh, sectors that are well equipped to transfer over into producing wind turbines. Uh, but it's not a certainty, and other countries are doing a lot more than we are here. After all, many U.S. steel plants have been broken down and shipped to China and India. The furnaces are rebuilt and relit to supply steel to Asia's green energy manufacturing industries. These other countries are ruthlessly pursuing this, these kind of investments in technology, and every day we don't, we're getting left further and further behind. First 1892, now 2010. When will Scientific American next visit the Cary Furnace site? And what story will we tell? This is a dialogue that we should have had 30 years ago in the 1970s. And if we can't get it right this time, um, I think it's going to set us back for a good long while.